Welcome to the Tomian Legion podcast, Tomian Cricket Team First Eleven Edition. Uh, with me, I have here today Kanish Sengun Ratnam, Shalin Dimel, Anup Paliyavadna, Nathan Kaldera, Vinaja Vijay Bandara, and me, Ryan Fernando. Uh, Nathan, how has been your First Eleven experience as the youngest in the side? Well, the practice uh, sessions have been tough, but. Um, I'm getting used to it, and it's good. It's a good feeling. Thank you. How has the the seniors helped you throughout these couple of months that practice has been going? They've helped me a lot with everything, from my life to cricket to everything. They've helped me a lot, and uh, yeah. Uh, so, Pali, can you just talk about your first first eleven year. As a fresher, and like, what you felt when you were playing, whether you were nervous or whether you were under pressure, something like that. Did you have anything like that? Obviously, last year I was very nervous, as I'm sure anyone playing their first season would have been. And I think I let it <coughs> get to me a bit too much, and uh, I wasn't able to perform very well. But uh, I've adapted to that uh, pressure well this year, and I've done much better than previously. Can you tell me what went through your mind when you were going for the first time in a world game? Well, actually, uh, I wasn't on the field for the first day, and then after batting, was a bit tired when I went into the field, but uh, got uh, got used to the rhythm uh, of the big match as uh, very quickly, I guess, and uh, yeah. So did, did the did anything was there any distractions from the crowd? <laughs> did you get there weren't much distractions, but uh, anyway, was a bit nervous when bowling the first ball, obviously as a fresher. But uh, only thing I was scared of was coming and stepping out and hitting a six for me. How and did you feel when you took uh, Ahan Vikram Singh as a Yeah, it feel? was a pretty special feeling when. Uh, then I got the record as we planned to get him and when all the guys <coughs> together and all the cheering from outside, it was pretty special, yeah. But unfortunately for me, you missed a second record, no? <laughs> <laughs> Why, what happened? I dropped the catch at Sealy. Like here. <laughs> so, Mirja, how has your experience at college been? From coming from Anand to here, what's the difference between the culture? Yeah, I can tell you it's totally different because uh, yeah, it's not really like this. It's, it's <laughs> different practice wise, it's also different. Team wise, different. Even uh, seniors wise, it's different because yeah, it's good. It's really, really good here okay. compared to that school. Uh, I won't be talking much about that school. Okay. <laughs> Was it hard to adapt or kind of hard? But uh, when time passed by. So, are you better at tennis or at playing cricket? <laughs> Both equally. Both equally. Yeah. What do you like more, tennis or cricket? Basically, I like cricket more. Why is that? What do you mean? Why that? Because I like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Nathan, what are your goals for this coming season? What do you expect? To do my best in every match I play, and with given all the opportunities I get to perform. Do you have like a set amount of wickets you <coughs> want to get, or set amount of runs you want to score? Yeah, tell you, so every match I want to perform. And, I yeah. see, I see. Pali, do you have any set targets? Uh, not really. Uh, for me, like you said, it's to do the best I can. I don't want to set any limits. I uh, see. Keep going with the same format we play. Shalin, can you share your big match experience with us? So my first year in 2018, under uh, I played under Delon Pires. So um, obviously, when I was also playing my first year, I was very nervous as a youngster. Um, so when I started the season, I didn't think that I would play the big match. But um, as I was playing, I knew that there was a chance that I could somehow play one day. But I never thought I would be able to captain school also. So one day, I can remember. 
before the match, Dinesh called me and said, you are playing the big match. I think this is like a month before the big match. So then I got my confidence up. It boosted my energy level. And ever since that day, I started performing well because I knew that I was playing the big match. And um, yeah, when I went for the big match, on the day, the day of the big match, I was pretty nervous getting onto the bus and just when going to SCC, scared about not knowing what's going to happen and all. But um, when you're near SSC, you just get the goosebumps. And when you see your name on the board, that's the best feeling you can ever get. And yeah, so my first big match, obviously we uh, didn't win, it was a draw. Um, after the match, everyone was pretty upset. But on the third day itself, everyone had a goal in mind and that was just to win 2019. Just to bring the DSN and Ica back home. So, um, we know the, <clears throat> what are your thoughts about this year's big match? What do you think we should do and what do you think that, um, like, uh, yeah, what do you think we should do as a team, as an individual, what do you think we should do? Actually, because uh, this year our team is really strong, strong as because our batting order is really good, even the bad bowlers, we have good bowlers, spinners, everyone. And, uh, you know, we've been performing well the last few matches and uh, I think we can we can win the big match this year. I really think we can do something. So, Ryan, can you tell me, uh, when you played your first uh, big match, you had a good run in the second level. When you got to know that you were playing the big match, uh, how did it feel? Um, it was pretty tough actually because uh, I had never played a first level match that entire season. I was playing second level throughout, also because I had only levels during uh, December. So I stopped cricket during October because of levels and then <coughs> I never, I never even dreamt of playing a big match that year. But then when I came back, uh, I can still remember the first match I played for the second level. That was St. Thomas's Bandaravela. I scored a hundred, and right throughout I was scoring big runs. 80s, 90s, 50s, continuously. But uh, I was a bit disappointed because I didn't get a chance uh, at, in the first level to play a match even. But I didn't let that affect my mindset. I kept on doing what I can, and that was to keep scoring runs in the second level. So I can still remember on the day of the mini battle, uh, that day I scored 70 in the mini battle. and. On the second day, uh, they were going to announce the team and it was about 9 in the night because uh, we had to wait until everyone comes to the dressing room and Hapa, the captain that year, he had to uh, mention the, the playing level and uh, he went in batting order and it was Sitar Hapu in Shalin Dimel and then it was my name Ryan Fernando and that was a real shock. I got goosebumps. No, not too, I'm going to lie. I got goosebumps. Started tearing and all. And at that very moment, I knew that I had to make my mind up for three days, much more <coughs> hectic three days. So it was tough, but I didn't put any added pressure onto me because uh, I didn't want to overthink it. I just wanted to go and do what I can do at my best. So, to be honest, I didn't have much pressure going into big match. The first session on the first day was a bit tense. I can remember I sent two uh, balls through my legs <laughs> as feeling. But uh, after that, I got, got into the rhythm of the game and I settled down. So, I personally, I didn't have much pressure going into the big match. And I think that helped me do well throughout the past two years. So. Ali, if you are to play the big match this year, what is your mindset going to be like? Uh, like I'm sure all of you all were nervous before, I'm definitely going to be nervous. Yeah. But uh, if I am to play the big match, by that time I would have had to perform. So if I can keep in mind all my good innings until then, then I will have a positive mindset when I go into the game. Therefore, I'll be able to give my best uh, to the team. I see. 
throughout the years you've been known as a batsman but uh, this year you <laughs> taken a complete turn and you become a more of a bowler you've been the main spinner in the side and the uh, best field as well yeah, <laughs> so far how has that been uh, what, what made you change your mind and to focus on bowling more i didn't actually change my mind and uh, become a bowler okay this in the my second under 17 year where i found that we didn't have a off spinner okay. so so I just told me, you know use me as option to you know bowl because there was nobody else after we decided the team and uh, i started bowling well that season and even when we went into the first 11 team uh, the off spinner was injured and i was lucky there to get uh, a few games and from there i gained a lot of experience and uh, now i'm bowling better than i would have ever thought and feeling better too <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, last season anand match uh, <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie as all of you over there i had a very bad anand match Uh, I dropped a sitter, <laughs> but uh, my goal on that day was next time I play Anand, I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, I took a good catch to cover up for that uh, good bowling. Yeah. And I'm happy that uh, that I got the chance to take a good catch. So, Virujo, what has been your favorite or most outstanding knock that you've had so far in your entire career? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can say I'm not gonna lie, but uh, the Saint Sebastian innings was one of my best innings. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, because we were hundred and no, we were no, sixty for six. Sixty for six. Sixty for six. We had two hundred and forty. Yeah, yeah. hundred and fifty odd. Yeah, we. I was batting with Kenison. We managed to get it. Yeah, pretty easy though. That is a good knock. Yeah. Yeah, probably the best innings I've seen from Inuche. Yeah, definitely. I've seen him batting throughout like last year and. Couple of matches this year as well, but under pressure that was a crucial knock because even though it was a practice game, I saw it as a gem of innings because yeah, yeah. we were sixty for six, the top order and middle order all collapsed. But Kanishtan and Minuja they were the heroes that day and they managed to save the match. Yeah. That was a pretty good knock that day. Kalu, what has been your best uh, performance or your best? Moment in your cricketing, cricketing history. Yeah. Probably the Richmond match when I took the four wickets. Nice. That was a good bowling performance, I think. And uh, yeah, that's probably yeah, nice. that was just extreme pace. <laughs> <laughs> when the left hander came into bat, he was just clueless what yeah. was going to happen. That was good. <laughs> like, I don't, I I don't know the feeling of uh, like a batsman getting hit like when you're bowling. I. Kalu would have had an amazing feeling when he hit that batsman with a short ball. Yeah. So yeah, that is good pace. What do you learn from your senior players like Kanister? <laughs> <laughs> a lot from everything from cricket to the way they handle everyone and everything is just good. Discipline wise, there's a lot to learn from them. Kenny, how has your cricketing experience been? You've been a You can keep. <laughs> you've been an opening batsman. Leg spinner. Leg spinner. Now you're in a. <laughs> now you're an opening fast bowler in the West End. How has it been? Yeah, it was pretty hard actually. Started keeping because I didn't have a place. <laughs> <laughs> the B team of my first under fifteen year uh, started opening batting as well in that season, and then uh, they let us. And opening fast bowler and then opening batsman in the next under seventeen season as well, and then eventually got dropped to the middle order in the under seventeen season due to bad batting, <laughs> and uh, then eventually turned up into fast bowler. <laughs> how did you how did you go from wicket keeper to fast spinner to fast bowler? So I I was a keeper because there was no pace, and then actually. Do you idolize anyone as a fast bowler? You have any idols? Yeah, I would say Sahan, Vijay Singh. Sahan is this. internationally who? Internationally, James Adelman. Okay. As a, as a batsman, who do you idolize? As a batsman. Don't say Virat Kohli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, what's with you and the Indian team? You you are obsessed with the Indians. I don't see why because I think the five of us don't like the Indians, but yeah. you from everyone else has a thing. No, it's like this. I I like all the teams which have a good base attack. Okay. Like India, Australia, England, South Africa. Basically. So basically, all the countries in the. Yeah. 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 So India. I don't know why I like it so much more than the other countries, but um, India maybe because of Virat Kohli, because the way he plays and the way they play the game, because they don't give up uh, on the game very soon, and uh, even the reward uh, takes the batting well and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, they I like the way they play the game, the attitude and uh, all. Yeah, so that's why they keep on winning matches, a lot of matches. Okay, so that uh, that concludes our first session of the podcast. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back and live at the Chicken or the Egg World Summit. Up next, we have Mr. Plump. What are your thoughts on this complicated question? I say we solve this problem by building a wall around it. Could you explain further? Simple, like how CIC makes Besto chicken. CIC Besto? Yeah, young lady. The quality, safety, and taste of CIC Besto chicken is because it comes from a 100% controlled environment. World up for the better. Bingo. Uh-uh. Besto. What is your coping mechanism? What are you battling today, my friends? Use the privilege of prayer and posture your heart in submission. Let's trust God to work everything out for our good as He promises.